Okay, so before we officially get started here, I feel like it is most appropriate to point out that Grimes' ex-husband banned my old account on Twitter. This is the second time I've been suspended in a year, and I'm not gonna stop complaining about it. Feel free to follow me on my new account at Kayla Says More. I am trying to connect with all of my old mutuals and my followers, and if you decide to connect with me there, I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. So whenever I announce who I'm picking for How the Internet Fell Out of Love or who I'm thinking of picking, and hi if you're new here, How the Internet is a monthly series that I do where I sort of profile a celebrity and their relationship to fame and internet culture over time, I usually get a couple of comments that are like, oh, I didn't know the internet was ever in love with this person. And I typically wave that off because I feel like I pick sort of high profile people most of the time where a lot of people know their story, but I did get a couple of these kinds of comments for Grimes. And to really understand the height of Grimes' popularity and influence in popular culture, I need to take you back to like 2014. <laughs> Elise Boucher, known professionally as Grimes, is not for everyone, but that doesn't mean she isn't incredibly talented. If you want a brief history lesson, Claire was born in Canada to a wealthy family, and she first released music under the name Grimes on MySpace as early as 2007. She's a self-taught musician, she has a lot of electronic influences, and I feel like she sort of hit her peak around 2014-2015. That's when I first became aware of her, and I feel like to a lot of people at the time, her sound was really new and fresh, and I think people forget that her early stuff on her albums visions and art angels. It was all very influential. For example, my freshman year of college was in 2016 and I worked at a college radio station. And I remember a lot of the newer stuff that we were playing sounded a lot like Grimes. There was a very heavy influence there. She's definitely a little weird. Her music is an acquired taste. It's not for everyone. But a lot of people really fucked with it and for good reason. I think nowadays people often try to discredit Grimes' genuine talent just because of the antics that she's been up to in recent years. But no, this is why the internet was in love with Grimes. She had a fresh sound. She had a new and different and interesting perspective and in an era as loud and annoying as 2014, I think that was needed and appreciated. And while her music was already quirky and weird, she herself also had a very interesting personality, often oversharing in interviews about various anecdotes from her childhood that were a little bizarre to say the least. I, you just read it cold. Yeah. In 2009, Grimes and a friend attempted to sail down the Mississippi <laughs> River to New Orleans, New Orleans from Minneapolis, in a houseboat they built. Following several mishaps, including engine trouble and encounters with law enforcement, the houseboat was impounded by the city of Minneapolis. Grimes claims that elements of the story were exaggerated in the newspapers that reported on it at the time. The adventure has been turned into an animated video narrated by T-Bone Burnett. There are zillions of other bizarre Grimes anecdotes like this. We got bigger fish to fry, so I won't get into all of them here. But it's easy to understand why certain crowds would respond well to this. Because it's not quirky in the relatable way, but it seems sort of quirky in a genuine way. And just like Grimes' bizarre tall tales that she's told over the years, people have also responded well to her sort of candid, no fucks given attitude, discussing where she stands on certain social issues and industry problems. Grimes has sort of been known to admire various pop divas. For example, she has described hearing Mariah Carey for the very first time and realizing that she wanted to make pop music. But Grimes, despite admiring these larger-than-life figures in pop music, has never packaged herself in a similar way. She's always been sort of messy and rough around the edges and willing to say whatever comes to her mind, despite becoming this indie industry darling, even eventually getting represented by Jay-Z's Rock Nation. So I think it's important to understand that two things are true. Uh, Claire or Grimes can be really, you know, talented and influential in the realm of pop music. Uh, she can kind of carve out her own niche and do her own thing and she can appear, you know, her own version of attractive or relatable in that way. But she can also be an out of touch, likely neurodivergent rich kid from Vancouver uh, who can fall victim to the whims of an egotistical billionaire maniac. And we're gonna talk about that now. In 2018, it was confirmed that Grimes began dating tech billionaire Elon Musk. The pair initially connected on Twitter after bonding over a joke about AI. How sexy. Grimes and Elon was the type of thing where you heard it and you were like, oh, we're living in a simulation, this makes no sense. And then you think about it for like another minute and you're like, oh no, actually, 
I get that entirely, that, that makes perfect sense to me. Because they both think that they're smarter than they actually are, and they both have ample space to get high off of each other's bullshit. Said bullshit included Grimes getting pregnant in 2020 and revealing that in the most Grimes way possible, and revealing that they named their baby after a math equation. I have absolutely no tolerance for this shit. Talk about whatever weird philosophical nonsense you want to on your own time, that's none of my business. But the second you doom your kid to a life of this idiocy, like, I'm out, there's no coming back. Now, at first, a lot of this was very unserious, but it's worth pointing out that there were forces behind this relationship that were more political and more sinister, as fans poured over Grimes' social media during this period of time and quickly figured out that the based feminist indie kid facade was slowly melting away. Highlights include Grimes taking anti-imperialist out of her bio after it became public that she and Musk were dating, Grimes claiming on Twitter incorrectly that Elon Musk has never prevented his employees from unionizing, which he very much has, Grimes' own mother beefing with Elon on Twitter, after he tweeted out to his followers to take the red pill. Grimes tweeting this at Elon after he tweeted pronouns suck. Grimes making a cameo as Princess Peach in an aforementioned SNL sketch where Elon Musk appears as Wario. And perhaps the most infamous story in the Elon Musk x Grimes era, the Azalea Banks beef of 2018. Just a quick note before we get into this, I am trying my best to go in chronological order here because there is a lot here. I just don't want anybody to think that I'm implying at this point in the video that Claire is not responsible for her own views and actions. We will get Get into that, we will talk about the Nazi stuff. Just give me a second. Like I said, this is all very narratively dense. Okay, so in the summer of 2018, it was confirmed that Grimes and Azalea Banks were supposed to work together on an album. In August of that same year, Azalea Banks confirmed that she arrived at one of Elon Musk's homes, presumably to work with Grimes on some of that music. At this time, there was some controversy around one of Elon Musk's business ventures, Tesla, because he tweeted that he was going to take the stock private and nobody knew if he was joking. Azalea Banks later implied that Elon Musk tweeted this while he was on acid. So according to Banks, Grimes and Elon went into hiding at some tech convention in Las Vegas, while Azalea Banks stayed in their house. There is also some discrepancy in the narrative here because Banks claims that she did meet Elon before he and Grimes left for the weekend, but Elon denies that they ever met in the first place. Musk confirmed later that he did in fact see her at one of their homes, but they didn't have a very long interaction. And then Azalea Banks started posting to her Instagram story that Elon Musk is in possession of her phone and that he needs to give it back to her. Then on August 21st, Azalea Banks shared a text in which she explained that Elon Musk had a bizarre obsession with the number 420 inadvertently because of Azalea Banks, and that's why he decided to tweet that he was taking Tesla stock private at $420, which is one of the tweets that caused Tesla and Elon Musk to be investigated by the SEC for market manipulation. While the relationship between Grimes and Elon Musk has had some bizarre highlights over the years, which have forever encased themselves in modern day pop culture canon, the love story did come to an end, a bitter end in fact, as Grimes and Elon have long been in a custody battle over their three children. Yes, they had two more children and they both have weird as fuck names. We know from now deleted posts from Grimes that the custody battle has not been easy and that the two of them are perpetually suing each other into oblivion, primarily over whether or not the cases should actually play out in California where Grimes lives or Texas where Musk lives. And trust me when I say that no one dislikes Elon Musk more than me. And he's like on the bottom of the list in terms of anybody you could ever opt to have kids with. Like it's just a horrible idea in my opinion for him to be anyone's father. But as much as Grimes is currently a victim of her getting slammed around in the courts by Musk's legal team. Like, I get it, it is certainly not easy to go to war in a custody battle with the world's richest man. But I think because Grimes has built up this persona and everything she does is interpreted through this artsy lens of technology and philosophy and AI and she's like literally a space alien that's come to Earth. I think what happens is almost this self-infantilization where because Grimes is so out there in her behavior, people have trouble holding her accountable for any of the actions that she has actually done. Like, sure, I'm sure Elon charmed the pants off of her when they first started dating, but the way she would go about trying to justify her relationship with him as if he's not a ruthless capitalist billionaire, it just reads very hollow to me, especially considering that it seems like some of Elon's controversial ideology has rubbed off on her to the point where it's like, okay, I don't think your gaze on the world is warped because of some man that you dated. I think it's actually just you. In December of 2023, Claire tweeted out that she gets called a Nazi because she is proud of white culture. She followed this up with some nonsense about humans loving each other and that she's not a white supremacist, she's a human supremacist because humans are amazing. So I feel like when you see people who have this sort of rhetoric, like what Grimes is posting in this example, it's easy to write them off and be like, oh, okay, those are like some yuppie free spirit love people, they don't have an actual ideology, they don't know what they're talking about, nothing they say is grounded in any reality. And I can see why people would make that case for Grimes because that's sort of her whole persona is that she's like, you know, 
an out of this world alien type human and nothing she says has any actual bearing on reality. But when you look a little deeper, uh, some of this stuff is actually a little bit more calculated than it may seem. So like all of the sources I used in this video, I will link everything in the description down below, including this Reddit thread. And I don't like throwing this term around unless I actually do mean it because I think it's important for words and phrases to have meaning. But TLDR, Grimes is routinely interacting with social media accounts that frequently post white supremacist ideology. Now, I guess you can argue that maybe she doesn't really understand what she's engaging with on there, especially considering that her ex-boyfriend made it a cesspool. But truly the benefit of the doubt can only extend so far when you are consuming the material of so many of these accounts that it can't just possibly be a coincidence. Like these Twitter accounts in the screenshots I'm showing here do not operate in vague terms. They don't have to anymore. And so Grimes therefore cannot hide behind the facade of ignorance. She knows who she's following, she knows what she's liking, and this is just the stuff I can show. There's some stuff I can't. So I encourage you again to go to that Reddit thread if you are interested in a deeper dive on this. So I think throughout all of this and all of the sagas that I mentioned, people have had a lot to say about Grimes, but I've never really seen the take that she's bad at her job and she's bad at being an artist, but given what happened at Coachella this weekend, uh, I think that has come back around and now people are like, oh no, she's also bad at her job. She's definitely bad at her job. So over the weekend, Grimes performed a DJ set at Coachella, but she ended up stopping the set due to frustration and technical issues. Apparently due to a technical error, her tracks were sped up too fast and she couldn't do the math to get them back on tempo. And like, I don't know anything about DJing, but from what I understand, this is an issue that a DJ should be able to fix in real time. Grimes apologized for the situation on Twitter and said that she will get her set in order next time for when she performs. And I know there were a lot of technical issues at Coachella this year, but it kind of sparked a conversation about whether or not Grimes is actually a competent DJ. Again, I don't know enough about DJing to tell you the answer to that, but people have also been sharing similar stories about how she has showed up to gigs unprepared, and talking about this does seem kind of trivial after doing sort of a mini deep dive on the white supremacist talking point stuff. But now you know that not only is Grimes a fascist, but she's a fascist who can't DJ. I guess the most disappointing thing about this whole saga is that Claire is very talented. Her art is good, and she is good at making it for the most part. But Claire has always said that Grimes is a social project, an experiment. And despite what sounds like a tumultuous upbringing in its own right, I don't think Claire's background has ever allowed her to be truly challenged, to grow and understand the world as a person rather than just as an idea. Claire's trajectory in the public eye shows that no matter how talented you are, you can still lose touch with reality in a really scary way. And uh, is there any coming back from that? I don't know. There's still no coming back from the baby thing though. Like if you're listening to this and you're having a child, please give your kid a normal fucking name. I often frequent the name nerds subreddit. And trust me, if you pick a bad name for your kid, they'll tell you. And I think that's beautiful. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. A reminder that you can follow me at all of the social media listed in this beautiful link tree, which I will link in the description for you down below. Let me know who you would like me to profile for next month's How the Internet Fell Out of Love episode. Stay safe out there. Don't pick a dumb name for your baby. And I'll see you next time. I'm a